What's up, guys? This is Dave Van Auken back again on the Fight Bananas podcast. Uh, that right there, that was the beginning of Taylor Jenkins' little highlight video. She's getting ready for a kickboxing fight that she is so amped for, guys. That's uh, February 29th. That is around the corner. We're almost there. But that was a little video we put on our YouTube channel, Fight Bananas on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and all that good stuff. Man, Taylor Jenkins, Killer B. We talked to her probably three, four months ago. We met her through Impa Kasanga and I, and um, you know, we, we did a podcast together, and boom. Uh, the rest is history. We are humongous fans of Taylor. Uh, Killer B, we just like her grit. Uh, we love her inside the cage. She is just a, um, a fighter's fighter. Uh, she's just one of those people you watch, and you're like, whoa, she has it. So uh, Taylor Jenkins, coming back on the podcast kickboxing match february 29th there's some bad blood there we're going to talk about it we're going to get through it we are humongous fans of taylor uh so much things going on she's been kicking butt and taking names her social media platforms are on fire make sure you follow her on instagram tay w jenkins give her a follow taylor jenkins coming back on the fight bananas podcast hey guys before we talk to taylor jenkins let's thank one of our sponsors Warhammer Fightwear. Check them out at warhammerfightwear.com. They have all gear for mixed martial arts, for ladies, for kids, and for us men. Check out Warhammer Fightwear at warhammerfightwear.com. All right, guys. On the Fight Bananas Hotline, our friend Killer B, Taylor Jenkins. How you doing? I'm fantastic. How are you doing? Oh, so good. So good. Life is so busy. Uh, but it's awesome. Your fight, your kickboxing match is right around the corner. I know how amped and excited you are for this. So, uh, yeah, let's get into it. Let's uh, talk about this kickboxing, February 29th, versus a, uh, an opponent you've been wanting to uh, get your hands on, uh, Miss Jennifer Waters. Yes, I'm super pumped for this one because we've like been scheduled to fight twice and it's fell through both times. Both like both one fight was my fault. The other was her fault. And this time it's finally happening. And I just know she's been she's had her eye on me and I knew the time was coming. So now it's a, like almost a week out. So I'm super pumped because she's been asking for it and I'm ready to give her exactly what she's been asking for. I know. I just feel like in the fight game, I'm just, I would never ask for a fight. You know, you will get matched yeah. up and all that, but it's just like, it's just literally, you know, like uh, your parents, you always would say to you, you know, hey, don't make sure you, uh, you're you ready to get what you receive and all that stuff. So it's like in a fight, oh my goodness, like, uh, and of course against you. Um, one, thing, <laughs> <laughs> one thing, Taylor, I talked about in the intro is, um, and I would love your take, how you feel like you fight and how uh, describe your fighting style. The words that just kept, kept on coming to me was like grit, uh, all heart, um, your um, intensity. It's kind of unmatched. I really do. You have a big it factor when you get inside that uh, cage. So what do you think of your fighting style? What would you kind of buzzwords or how would you describe it? That is all perfect. Like literally <laughs> every single time I fight, even in, even just in training, like I put my heart and soul into it and I just like, I'm so intense and I take it so seriously. And it's like n every single fight, every single time that I go into the next fight, I'm like, I'm going to go in there and put it on the line even more so than the last one. And some people are like, I don't know how you can even possibly put any more into it because you go in there and just put your soul and body on the line. And it's just like I have I, I always say, like, name someone that has more heart than me because you won't like that is just like how I feel about myself. I genuinely put my heart and soul into it and it's intense. And I want I always go into every fight with the mentality that I want everyone to watch my fight and go, holy shit. I just loved watching her fight and she's great to watch. Like it's I want to put on a show for everyone. So I go in there and put everything on the line. So intense heart grit. That's you nailed them right <laughs> on the head. Right, right. A couple things there. One is I love how you said you know, it is the fight game, 
but at the end of the day, it is entertainment. People are going to ca- uh, come out. They're going to pay. They're going to pay their hard-earned money. Everyone's working hard trying to make that dollar. So if they're not entertained, if they're not, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, there's so many different fights out there. There's so many uh, organizations. There's so many independents. There's so many even big organizations, UFC and Bellator and PFL and one. There's just so much content you have to be entertaining. You have to uh, attract and you have to connect with the audience. And that's something to me, uh, you bounce off the TV. You bounce off of social media. You connect with almost everyone I talk to. And it's funny, we, you know, I talk to different fighters and promoters about you and they're like, oh yeah, no, we love Taylor. She like pops. So uh, oh, that's t- awesome. Yes. Yep. And then such this- a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> I just really try to put my everything into it as far as promoting, fighting, training, eating sleeping um i try to just carry myself like i don't i try to be like i'm i'm super respectful but i try to be exciting and funny and just like really truly genuinely be myself and like express exactly how i feel about it so i think that kind of separates me from other people for sure for sure and then the second point of that was uh, like you I love how you do. You're you're all in. Uh, almost whatever you do, especially I keep on bringing up the social media thing, guys. Follow Taylor Jenkins on Instagram, uh, Tay W Jenkins. She's a great follow. Uh, there's tons of pictures with uh, your kids. Uh, there's tons of pictures with you working at the coffee, and it's like whatever you're doing in that moment, you're all in. And I do. I love that about you. I admire that about you. It's like whatever you're doing in that moment. And I'm like that too. You know that we talk off air about that. There's just no reason to do anything half-assed. There's no reason to do anything without all your heart into it. So I just to uh, talk about that about your camp. Like when you're at Jimmo, when you're there, you're all in. All in. Yeah. When you do things, you got to use your full ass, not just half the ass. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Like when I'm at the gym, it's just even sometimes I get, you know, I catch a lot of flack for being super intense and like hardcore during sparring and drilling and stuff. But I'm just like, this is like my dream and my passion. And like, I just want to make sure I'm ready and like go in all in. So every single time I train, I'm all in. I just like to give it my, my heart and soul. Like I said, with fighting, training, anything. So the second I get in there and the second I put my gloves on, I got to I just got to give it everything. And that's just how I feel about everything in life, being a mom, working, training, like give everything 100 percent in your full heart and into everything. Right, right. Um, another thing I you know me, I listen to so many podcasts and I, I I've been reading a lot of books lately about just, you know, doing the best you can and all that kind of jazz. And. I love the momentum and the aura that I see around your gym. Uh, I just talked to Impa Kasanga and I a couple of podcasts ago, and he was just so, you know, we're talking through a telephone, right? We're, we're talking mm-hmm. back and forth, but when he talks about Jimmo, it's like I see the heart coming through the telephone. Like I, I feel it and see it, and the goosebumps come up on my arms. And even with you, I, I talked to you about it, and you're like, it's just, there's so, you can't put your finger on it. Um, but your the gym just has so much great positive momentum. Uh, can you put your fingers on it? Is there one thing, or is it a hundred things? Is it every little thing? Uh, why is there so much great um, aura around your gym? I think that we all just have like different, like our own different thing that we all bring in together, and we get in there. It's like none of that like really matters when we're in their training like we're all in there we all know our same goals we're all trying to help each other reach our goals and it's it's just that like we're all different we all have different we're all different walks of life but we go in there with the same goal to be successful and we just have so much fun like everyone's always joking or talking shit and it's just it's like a big dysfunctional family like my coach jeff says that all the time like even when we have like even if there's ever like a spat or anything he's like we're all just a big dysfunctional family and you're all you're all stupid <laughs> like we just like get around, we all get along like a bunch of crazy people and it's just a big dysfunctional family and i think that's really what it is and we all have the same goals and we all just want to get there and help each other get there other than that it's like i don't really know like it's just it's the gymo factor like you know when you walk in gymo like you can feel the vibe in the room like right we're all there to work hard but we enjoy it like we really truly enjoy it 
Right. And hey, uh, Taylor, you got to get on the, your coach or whoever's selling those shirts. You know, uh, they got to put one of those t shirts in the mail for me very, very soon, you know? Yes. A gym <laughs> shirt, I got you. Oh, 100%. I love that gym. It's awesome. Um, okay. This, uh, so the organization that you're fighting for is LS uh, X. Is that who it is? Um, it's Triangle Kickboxing Promotions. And it's like lightning. I, I don't, I'm like really just like, I'm. I'd be lying if I just said I just wasn't stupid. Like knowing my <laughs> Roman numerals, I think it's Lightning Strikes Five. I keep oh. their Roman numerals in the mix. Oh, ten! It's ten! It's ten! Okay, it's, yeah. that's awful. Uh, but whatever. I'm I'm not good with numbers, and <laughs> I just sound so stupid. Triangle good. kickboxing promotions. Okay. Listen, all I know is I show up and fight. Okay? Right. Right. And then, so we talked about it, and I, you know, let's talk about it now. We're on air. Is you, I feel like you like, I don't want to say you like kickboxing more than MMA, that, that sounds wrong, but you are like, you love the sport of kickboxing, and you know, there's been a lot of like BJJ super fights lately, a lot of grappling tournaments, even on UFC Fight Pass, like a lot of big things happen in that. Do you see like kickboxing its own, like how about like if UFC gets involved, or you know, of course there's glory and all that stuff, but do you think that kickboxing just its own sport can kind of blow up how like a BJJ super fights are doing? I mean, I really wish it would. Like, I don't know if it's like on that track. Like, I don't feel in my soul that it's like on that track. Right. Um, Glory's got really good talent, and Glory's getting like us women. Like, we're getting a huge division in Glory. Like, a lot more people are signing with Glory. But I feel like a lot of people just kind of push kickboxing to the side. But I honestly enjoy, like, I, that's what I've said is, like, I love MMA and I love fighting MMA. And it's one of my first loves, like, when, like, fighting. But if kickboxing was just in the right spot with everything, I would be all in for that. Because that's just what I love to do. I love to strike and I love kickboxing. That would be the road I would love to take. But it's just, there's not, it's not, you know, it's not blown up as big as MMA. You know, right, and right. that's like uh, MMA. I have more opportunities and things like that, and I hope it does. Like I'm really trying to be one of the like, hopefully, future pioneers to women's kickboxing to try to get it going on that path and like make people want to watch it more and um, for it to blow up. And Glory's great, but I mean, honestly, even a lot of people don't even really truly know about Glory unless you're really all in for fighting. And I wish it would, because kickboxing is, it's crazy. Like, it's, it's freaking crazy. Oh, I love it, because, uh, I'm a huge fan of kickboxing, and, uh, one of our friends here, where we live here in Daytona Beach, Florida, is kickboxing, and it's just, I like, it. you don't have to worry about the wrestling factor. So you can kind of yeah. see more, um, you uh, a little bit more creative on your feet. You can do more spinning back fists. You can do jumping. You know, just a lot more crazy question mark kicks because you don't have to worry about. Oh wow! If I go for this question mark kick, she's gonna you know. I'm gonna get taken down. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So I just I love the uh, the aggressiveness. I oh I'm a huge huge kickboxing fan. Um, a couple kind of just budding questions, almost in the whole MMA um, you know circle, is one a couple weeks ago. Um, I don't know if you saw it, Taylor. It was Lauren Murphy versus Andrea Lee, and mm -hmm. uh, they were fighting. And for one, uh, a lot of people thought it was a bad scoring issue. Uh, a part of that was I, uh, Joe Rogan and Dominic Cruz were going crazy because some of the judges during the fight were like wa weren't watching the fight; they were on their phone or looking away or whatever. Um, as a fighter and as you're all heart and you're all in, how much does that just freaking annoy you? How much does that bug you that, you know, these two girls are putting all, they're all into it. They're, they're going through yeah. war for 15 minutes and the judge's job is to judge and just pay attention. They're not in there getting yeah. hit. They're not going in there getting punched. They didn't have to train. They just have to pay attention for 15 minutes and they're on their phone playing, you know, bubble blast or something. It's just, it yeah. drove me crazy. <laughs> That is so fucking insane and just like to me is so disrespectful. Like if I was in that ring and noticed that shit, I would have jumped out of that cage and just went crazy. <laughs> but it's just like you guys like they get paid to be there. If they're if they're freaking judging for the UFC, I'm sure they're getting paid a pretty penny to be there and judge. So it's like, come on, man, like take the 15 minutes. It's 15 minutes. I know you have to sit and do it all night long, but it's 15 minutes of your time to sit there and just watch like 
like it's not that hard yeah that that kind of pissed me off a lot but then also at the same time you know as a fighter i've always been told like if you don't want it to go the wrong way don't leave it in the hands of the judges right so that's where that factors in but at the same time that they should definitely should not have been sitting on their phones and that like that pissed me off too for sure and you know i've been to so many regional um you know mma and boxing shows of that nature and during the regional shows, they kind of spin them out. They go fast. There's a fight, fight, fight. In the UFC, you know, they got commercials afterwards. They have breaks. They got TV stuff to go to. Like, they don't, you know, they let the fighters fight for 15 minutes, and then they go away for a little bit. So if the judge, you know, uh, bathroom break or go on their phone, like, there's plenty of time under the UFC umbrella that they have to kind of get away from it for a couple minutes. So that... The judges aren't watching for 15 straight minutes just blows my mind. It's, like, insane. Um, one thing with that is a button topic that Invecta FC is doing, and that might be, you know, hey, uh, a guideline for you in the future. We'll see. But they're open now to open scoring, and we've been talking about that forever on the podcast. We've been talking, like, literally just an MMA scoreboard on here on Fight Bananas. Are you a fan of that? Would you love to see where you're at after each round and just, oh, look up, hey, I'm in the red corner. I did win that round. I didn't. Would you like to be into open scorebook or uh, um, scoreboard? Um, You know, I would, but then at the same time, I get, like, I just, like, <laughs> but, I mean, I don't know. It's hard because, like, when you're in a fight like that, you know when you're winning and when you're not. Like, I, I just, I don't, I really don't, unless unless the judges just absolutely rob you, I feel like in a fight that goes to decision or anything, you know kind of where you're at just by how you're feeling and how it's going. And I would like that, but then at the same time, I know that if I'm in the second round and it's, like, close and I see that, like, I'm just going to be, like, I'm going to have a panic attack. But then at the same time, it might fire me up to go in there and be like, all right, I'm down. I need to just put everything I have into it. So I don't know. I think it's a great idea. It's definitely something they should try, and I think it's a great idea. So I'm on both sides of the fence with that. Okay. Like, it's – that's just – I mean, I think that's actually pretty exciting. Like, yeah. I, I feel like – I feel I feel 50-50 on that one for sure. Okay. And, yeah, and it will be new and it will be different and, uh, you know, hey, change is hard and new sometimes is hard. But I just think, you know, it's we're 2020. Uh, if you go to a soccer game or a football game or a baseball game, even gymnastics, you see a score. You, like you see, hey, America's up on the gymnastics all team, you know. So it's like an yeah. MMA that doesn't have a scoreboard. To me, it's like it's one of those things when it happens uh, 10 years from now, we're going to be like, how did it not? Like uh, I, I threw out a tweet out there, Taylor. I was like, we used to be able to smoke cigarettes on airplane. And like those were just normal days back in the day. And now it's like. How did we do that? You know, so I can't yeah. wait. I think an MMA scoreboard uh, will happen very soon. But um, wow, we're almost there. We're around a week away. Taylor Jenkins, February 29th, kickboxing. I know how important this fight is to you, how uh, not even just in, for your career, but just even uh, you want to get your uh, hands and uh, feet on uh, Miss Jennifer Waters very soon. So, so excited. Oh my gosh, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything in the UFC? Uh, I know Ioana's fighting uh, Wei Lee very soon. Uh, there's been a couple female fights. Uh, is there something in the UFC that has uh, sparked your interest lately um everything that was sparking my interest happened like john jones that fight i kind of yes. think like i love john jones but i do think that was kind of like a shitty call like i don't know i just was like i wasn't too happy about his performance for that fight and i don't think like that was one of those things with the judges and that was the same night that a- andrea and them fought right yes it was yeah, yeah and i do i actually am excited for i cannot ever freaking say her name for Joanna and uh, Jung Wei Lee or however the you I think you nailed name. it. I think you nailed it. <laughs> yeah, I like. I do like that. Um, I was pumped for the Invicta fights that just happened, yeah. and Jin Yu won. I really like Jin Yu. Um, one of my former teammates, Amber, Amber the Bully Brown, she's going to be fighting for Invicta, so I'm excited for that. Um, UFC. I'm trying to think. Like I, like Hot Sauce fought. I was pumped for that. Um, oh, yeah, the all the, about Scott. all the people I used to train with in Albuquerque, they all fought on that same card, too. Um, so I actually really just haven't even, like, with all the stuff that's just gone on, I haven't even thought of what's coming up besides Joanna. And now I'm starting to just, like, kind of tilt towards the sides of Jung Wei Lee because, like, Joanna's little attitude lately and, like, the way she <laughs> is, I'm like, what happened? Like, like, the person I fell in love with when she was the champ and became the champ and stuff just isn't the same as she is now to me. And I'm like, I kind of want Jung Wei Lee to just give it to her. 
Right, right. It seems like she has this chip on her shoulder for some reason. I don't know why. I can't put my finger on it. Maybe only. I think it's the boob job. I think it's the boob job <laughs> she got. I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, it's something, something's <laughs> up by her shoulder. <laughs> um, yeah, talk about Scott. You said that, uh, we talked about it a little bit off air, like you said. Um, it was a great win for him. Uh, can you tell us that story, what he thought of his performance and, you know, what the gym said? Yeah, I had heard that he was, like, saying he wasn't, like, super, like, he was, I mean, of course he was pumped because he won, but he was like, ah, I could have done more. I could have done more. I could have done this differently. But Scott went there and freaking dominated Jim Miller, and it was a phenomenal fight. It got fight of the night. Hot Sauce literally just served it to him, so we were all super, super proud of him. Yeah, like, but it's just funny to, you know, be on that side of the spectrum, like, ah, I could have done this or I could have done that. And there's fights I've won that I haven't been happy about. Just And, like, I've won phenomenally. Like, my last fight, I won in 60 seconds, and I was still not happy about that performance. Wow. Oh, okay. So we'll get into that then. But let me go back real quick to uh, uh, Scott B. and Jim Miller. Like, Jim Miller has been in the UFC for you know, eight to 10 years, a veteran has fought the toppest guys, co-main events versus Nick Diaz and everything of that nature. Um, it just, if you get a win, sometimes that experience versus a guy who's been there for that long, is just incredible. Like, I don't think he knows how great of a win that really was for him. And now his career will take off. And sometimes you just need to get that, you know, one win against that vet. And now you can start just knocking people down and, and going through people. So I think that was a humongous win for him. I really do. And and then back to your thing you said about 60 seconds. I hear that all the time in the uh, fighters inside the cage that go, we, we train for six weeks. We cut weight. It's miserable. And then you go in there. Even when you win, you, 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 I thought you looked phenomenal. 60 seconds, you get a win. Um, the girl kind of quit. Let's just kind of be honest with it. You, you, she yeah. was, she did not want that smoke. You, you gave yeah. it to her. You, you showed up. You're in her face. She didn't want it anymore. And they were saying, like, and you weren't happy about it. Is that just a fighter's mentality or is that ever, you think individually or what, what's your take on that? I don't know. Like, it's, I think we're just, um, I, when you just train so hard and you're in there every day putting in work and you want to like, and I can't say anything because I won phenomenally, but there were things that like, I just, you know, I knew going in there against her, like her, like her, I knew my striking was better than her. So when she hit me in my freaking nose and stunned me, I was like, ah, that shouldn't have happened. Like I shouldn't have even got there. Or like when I went for a takedown and it didn't work, like shouldn't have even gotten to that point like it, I shouldn't have let it get to that point and so just to me I'm like ah I could have done so much better or I could have you know I don't know what it is but I think we're just we're very self-critical I think um I've had fights that I've watched that I've been like wow I did perfect everything went right but then there's fights like that like that I've won where I'm like I definitely could have done something better or more spectacular if I had the opportunity and like I don't know we're just I feel like we're a bunch of self-critical, you know. <laughs> right, right. Emotional fighters. Um, guys, talking to Taylor Jenkins, uh, we're going to give you the floor here in a second. Uh, you know, promote, sponsor, all that good stuff. Jim sponsors all that. But I'm telling you guys, you have to follow her on Instagram. She's such a great follow. It's uh, Tay, T-A-Y-W Jenkins. And uh, here's, so here's like her, her profile. So she has like her, you know, Taylor Killer B. Jenkins. Okay, cool. Uh, mommy. Pro boxer, pro kickboxer, MMA fighter, glory, and then right underneath that, donut lover. Yes, donut <laughs> lover. That's like that should have been first. I know. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. After like, after mommy. After mommy. Donut after lover, mommy. And then the rest. Yeah, after mommy. <laughs> it's awesome. So yeah, the floor is yours. Um, you know, anything you want to talk about, promote, uh, push away. Um, I just want to say thank you to all of my sponsors, Carolina CBD Empire, Honey Athletics, and Steel Nutrition. I want to say thank you to Fight Bananas. Um, I'm trying to think of everybody off the top of my head, and this is where I always get like a loss. Uh, Jiu Jitsu Flow Gear. Oh, I know I'm just missing people. Just Hard Apparel. I want to say thank you to my team, my um, tribe at JMO. Thank you to Truck and Carson. Thank you to Mark Trader. Thank you to everyone supporting me and putting in work with me. Um, thank you, Don Rogers, for the opportunity for Triangle Kickboxing Promotions. And, and <laughs> that's about it. That's about it. Uh, well, probably, <laughs> I drew a blank. 
<laughs> oh, it's all good, all good. We we mentioned Invicta FC. Is that something that you would love to kind of be a part of, maybe in the spring oh, or the summer? Oh my god, okay. I have been dying to mm. fight for him. Like the, since I first started fighting, that's always been my goal is to make it to Invicta, and I can just like, I can just taste the opportunity right there. I just need to get like my foot in the door. Like I know that they would just absolutely love me and I would absolutely love nothing more than to go fight for them. And that's always been my goal. Even if it's like a freaking one fight deal, like my goal has always been to just step in the Invicta cage because it's all females. It's like the pioneers of freaking women's MMA have all been in there. And it's like, that's just one of my goals. Yeah. Like one of my huge goals is to go fight for Invicta. Okay. Let me, after this, I'm going to call Shannon up president of Invicta FC. And I got to, you know, we got to make this happen. This is, uh, you're, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> you're too big for this. Uh, now, Taylor Jenkins. Thank you so much. Uh, Continue success. We cannot wait. Huge fans of uh, yours. You know that. And February 29th, kickboxing. Um, you know, take care of business, all right? Definitely yeah, take care of some business. Yeah, you know, business. bestie, we got this. And I thank you for having me on here. I love talking to you. It's, Always. It's the best. So thank you so much. Oh, no problem. We'll talk to you very soon. We'll talk to you after your win, all right? All right, David. Have a good day. Thank you, guys. Five bananas. Woo! Can't wait. <laughs> Later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> There she was, guys. Killer B, Taylor Jenkins, back on the Fight Benaz podcast. Man, we love Taylor so much. Great fighter, great person, uh, all heart. And you can just hear it through just the interview, just our conversation. She just talks about it, uh, how she talks about her gym and her fighting style and what uh, her goals are. You just kind of, she bounces off the podcast. She just has that it factor. Uh, but guys, we're going to close up the show. Uh, make sure you keep on downloading, subscribing, uh, sharing, liking, uh, rating. I love it. And I tell people this all the time. This is my best way to keep the podcast going. And it is just, it's a ball going downhill. You know, the Indiana Jones scene, like Temple of Doom, that big, huge ball going after Harrison Ford. That's what the podcast is. Um, true story. But copy the link if you're listening to it on apple podcast or iHeartRadio or even on youtube like there's this way you can share the link what you do i do this with my friends they're like oh thanks i didn't even you know forget or life's busy so sometimes it's hard to go on some of these social media platforms but if you share a link through a text people will be like oh, okay dope let me look at this so guys share the link go to iHeartRadio. look up you know you can go to the uh, glover to share a podcast or you can go uh, how about some of our podcasts with our teammate ipa kasanganai how about the ones that just happened with brianna kellen like there's so much great content out there so you just copy the link on the podcast and send it to your friends send it to uh you know your girlfriend send it to your guy friends send it to guys who uh, train at the gym with you send it to your enemies that's what i like to do sometimes be like aha look what i just did you know send it to everyone and we're going to close it down we're going to thank one of our sponsors that's been with us since the get-go and still nutrition and still nutrition.com it's been awesome. They're partnered up with Taylor Jenkins. Uh, we love End Still Nutrition. Guys, go to their website. It's endstillnutrition.com. You can check out the team, the people that they hang out and they sponsor with, but check out their products. You can buy the products right on the website. I'm telling you, they have stuff for joint pain. They have electrolytes. So if you think you know you need it, a little boost, get it. Uh, they have fat burners. They have it all. They got protein shakes. They got pre-workouts. That's stuff that I use on the weekends. And I use the joint jiu-jitsu every single day. So check out our friends, guys, at nstillnutrition.com. Check out our great friend Taylor Jenkins on Instagram. Every social media platform, you can just find her. But on Instagram, guys, T-A-Y-W Jenkins. T-A-Y-W Jenkins. Thank you so much, Taylor, for coming back on the Fight Banana's podcast. Thank you guys for listening. Once again, we appreciate you. Guys, continue success out there. Continue blessings to everyone. Uh, we're going to talk to you guys really, really soon.